Now that we have built up all of these tests and techniques for determining if a series of, of, of numbers converges or diverges, let's go back. We're gonna go back to power series, okay? And we're gonna use these tests to determine the radius and interval of convergence for power series. Well, let me first just define, um, I will start by defining what is the interval of convergence. Okay, so definition, given a power series, the interval of convergence It's just the set is the set of x values for which the power series converges. Oh, I will write it down here. Converges. Okay, now it's called interval of convergence um, and it's almost always an interval. It's a set though. It's a set of x values such that the power series converges for those x. Now, let us, there's a theorem about exactly what types of convergence we can see, and that's what I will discuss next. Theorem. I will not prove this, but we will use this. Okay, so given a power series, And we know the general form of a power series looks something like this. We have CK, then we have X minus A to the K. Okay, this power series has center A, right? Given a power series, there are three possibilities. Okay, well, number one. This is when the series converges for all x. Okay, number two. The series converges only at the center. X equals a, okay? Now we've seen we saw an example of this, for example, and I will do this one exam, for example, e to the x, it's McLaren series, sine x, cosine x, those McLaren series, they converge for all x. Okay, then we have the power series might converge only at the center. And finally, and this is the, I guess, most interesting case, it says there is capital R bigger than zero, such that the power series converges if the absolute value x minus a is less than capital R and it diverges if absolute value x minus a is bigger than capital R. Okay, so in this bottom case, Capital R is called the radius of convergence. Okay. Now, number three says absolutely nothing about what happens when X minus A equals r. It just says if absolute value x minus a is less than r converges, absolute value x minus a bigger than r diverges, but when when absolute value x minus a equals r, this says nothing. Okay, now maybe I will erase up here and make some more comments. So let's look at this most interesting case, which is, which is number three. Well, 
in the let's first talk about the first two cases because they're a little bit easier so this thing i just erased which was the interval of convergence it's the set of x values for which the power series converges in this case the series converges for all x the interval of convergence is minus infinity to infinity, okay? And it's an interval. In this case, converging only at the center, while the interval of convergence is not exactly an interval, the interval of convergence here is just this. So the interval of convergence in the, here is this, and here is this, okay? This would be the interval. This would be the interval of convergence. It's just one value, the center. But here in number three, the interval of convergence, we don't know just by the statement of the theorem. Okay, it could be, well, let's draw a number line and then we will write this down. Here is my center in number three, A. And then there's this capital R called the radius. We move out by R. This value here is A plus capital R. This value here is A minus capital R, okay? And you notice that if you are here, absolute value X minus A less than R, you are in this open interval. So I can put open here, open here, and Everything I'm shading here in red satisfies absolute value x minus a less than r. So number three, it's guaranteed convergence in here. Okay, and number three guarantees divergence out here. So the divergence is in green, here, here. But what happens at these endpoints here and here, you have absolutely no idea. So if I go back to my comment, what's, what are the possible intervals of convergence? This would be, perhaps you have a minus R to a plus R. This would be if the series diverged here and here, Perhaps you have a minus r to a plus r closed on this end. If it diverged at this endpoint and converged at this endpoint, perhaps you have closed a minus r to open. This is when the power series converges at this endpoint, diverges at this endpoint. And finally, perhaps you are you converge at both and points okay so when we're in this case three where you have this capital r bigger than zero the interval of convergence there's four possibilities the only way to know which possibility you are which means you know which one of these or both or neither are included in the interval well you have to test okay so you, this is a part of the problem finding the radius of convergence this is step one in one of these problems. So if you remember I had here the heading, radius and interval of convergence. Finding the radius is step one. But if you are in case three, then you have more work to do. You must test the endpoints to figure out which of these four possibilities is your interval of convergence. Okay, now just by convention, um, this radius of convergence, we want to take a radius of convergence to make sense in all three of these cases. So in this first one, if the series converges, what am I going to write? If the series converges for all x, here we typically take the, we consider r to be infinity. Okay, the radius of convergence is infinity in this case. If the series converges only at the center, the convention is you would say that r is zero okay and these actually make sense if you start at the center i am at a and you move out by r in either direction then that open interval is guaranteed to be in your interval of convergence and here if r is infinity 
then you get the whole real line. If R is the center, I mean zero, then you only get the center. And so if you have a question that asks you for the radius and interval of convergence, well, if you get this case, R is infinity, immediately you know the interval. If you get R is zero, immediately you know the interval. But most of the time, or quite often, you get this capital R bigger than zero, which is a number. Then you have something to check, the endpoints. Okay, and these are the only sort of possibilities of how power series can converge. Now, let's just warm up with an example where we know the answer. It's something that we have discussed, although it's been a while since we have talked about power series. But let's warm up with this example. k equals zero to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. We know what this is, right? This is e to the x. So we know this is the McLaren series for e to the x. And we discussed that this converges for all x. And it equals e to the x for all x. But let us see it in how we are going to work other types of problems. We should see that the interval of convergence is minus infinity to infinity. The radius of convergence is infinity like this. Okay. Now, how are we going to figure out capital R when we are given a power series? Well, most of the time, in fact, I think all of the times in the problems that we see, we can use the ratio test. So ratio test loves, we know factorials, but also power series. Okay. So when we try to find capital R, every single example I will do, ratio test, ratio test, ratio test. <laughs> okay, so let's begin with this one. What did the ratio test say? Well, we start with, let's write ratio test. We start with this. Now, the only thing that can be non-negative, or the only thing that can be negative is is the x. So k factorial, I don't need that with the absolute value part. So I can rewrite this absolute value, ak plus one over ak as the following. I have absolute value of x to the k plus one over k plus one factorial, and then divided by absolute value of x to the k over k factorial. We invert multiply. We practice this with the ratio test. Now we're doing it with power series. So we, I will line up the stuff that will cancel. Okay, and then we have a k factorial over k plus one factorial. And then I can simplify this. Maybe I should have started a little further on the board so I had more space, but maybe I will simplify it here. This is equal to, or maybe I'll put it here. This is equal to this part, we get an absolute value of x, and then divided by k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1 times k factorial. So we just have a k plus 1. Okay, then this is simplified. Okay, so then we take a limit as k goes to infinity. Absolute value, a k plus 1 over a k. It's a limit as k goes to infinity of this. Okay, well, x is not varying with k. So this is fixed with respect to k. The only thing varying here, k goes to infinity. So, okay, we can think of absolute value of x is a fixed numerator, and then k is growing without bound. This limit is zero which is less than one, no matter what x is, okay, right? No matter x, this limit is zero, which is less than one, ratio test. We see that the power series converges for all x. So now I didn't even mention what the question was. I just wrote the power series, but the question in every single one of these is gonna be, 
find the radius and interval of convergence. Okay, maybe I'll write it in the future ones. So here, if we get that it converges for all x, my radius of convergence is infinity, and the interval of convergence is everything. Okay. So this is for this function. Although this, as I mentioned, was e to the x, so this was kind of just a warm-up in what are we gonna, what technique are we gonna use with power series? Is ratio test. Here's our second example. Find the radius and interval of convergence. They're all gonna read like this. And we have this power series, okay? You see it is this coefficients times x minus the center to the k. My center is two here, right? So if I simplify absolute value ak plus one over ak, the only part of this that can possibly be negative is the x minus two. And so I will put that in absolute values and everything else, this and this are positive, so I will just leave them as positive. Then divided by absolute value x minus two to the k over k times five to the k. Then we invert multiply and I line things up to how they will cancel. So I'm gonna have an x minus two to the, an absolute value to the k plus one. And in my denominator, it's like this to the k, okay? Then, let's see, these two are part of the denominator, so I will have a k plus one, and I will have a five to the k plus one, okay? But then, the corresponding terms of my numerator come from this, I will line it up, this is k, five to the k. Now, this is gonna simplify, I, purposefully lined it up because it helps us in simplifying. Well, this part we get just absolute value x minus two. This part doesn't really simplify. I'll leave it as a k over k plus one. And this part, we have a five in the denominator. I'll just put it here, okay? So this is the simplified ak plus one over ak in absolute value. Then, ratio test, we take a limit. Okay, so we have a limit as k goes to infinity. Absolute value, ak plus one over ak. We have simplified this quantity. This is absolute value x minus two over five times k over k plus one. Well, just like in the last example, this part here has no k in it, okay? The only thing varying with k is this term. So here, this will just, you could factor it out of the limit if you wanted to write that step, but I will just think about this as being a constant because it is with respect to k, and then I look here. So this term is all I really need to think about the limit. k plus one over k, no, k over k plus one. As you go to infinity, this goes to one. Okay, so then this limit is, like this. Now I'm using ratio test. So what do I need? The ratio test says for convergence, I need this less than one. For convergence, using the ratio test. Well, if you remember, it was down here, the theorem, we need absolute value x minus the center less than some capital R. Then, for convergence. Then that capital R is my radius of convergence. To get this from what we have right here, we just multiply through by five. So another way to say this, or you can write absolute value x minus two less than five. I have multiplied through by five. Okay, so thus we see like this, okay? So we have found the first part. Now, don't stop here. 
okay? We have found capital R is five. Let's draw our number line now. We have capital R. Okay, so I will draw it here. Here's my center is two. It says you move by five in either direction. So I come out here, this is seven. Then I come back here, this is minus three, okay? And I'll write this because I'm gonna have to erase in a minute. Capital R is five. We have found the radius. Well, my power series, I don't know what happens at minus three. I don't know what happens at seven, but I know it converges in here, guaranteed. And I know it will diverge out here, diverges, diverges, okay? So the only way I'm gonna know what happens at three, minus three and at seven is if I test them. And how do you test? Well, you just stick it into the power series and you'll have a series of numbers. Let me erase here. We could write down the possible intervals. Maybe I will for this very first example, and then I won't in future ones. So the possible intervals of convergence are, well, you could be minus three to seven. You could be closed minus three to seven. You could be open on one end, or you could be, this is a circular one, or you could be open on the other end. And you can create examples where all four of these can happen. So you can't rule out some because you think, well, that never happens for a power series. We can create power series where all four of those would happen. Well, not this power series, but you can make some to see that you can't have all possible of open and close on each side. All four cases do occur. Okay, well, back to this problem. What we need to do is we need to test. So now let me erase a little bit more. We can determine, this is the part two of the problem. To find the interval, we must test. Okay, which involves at x equals seven, what's my power series? and at x equals minus three. What's my power series, okay? So we just stick seven into this and then we simplify some. We have seven minus two to the k over k times five to the k, which is five to, the, oops, it's a sum. This is five to the k over k times five to the k. Now you want to simplify as much as you can because we're gonna have to figure out what's happening to the series. The five to the k's cancel and we get this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and write my power series. I will typically, as you will see, I write the power series for both my endpoints and I look at them together, then I figure out what's happening with them. So at x equals minus three, I get minus three minus two to the k over k times five to the k. This is a minus five to the k. Oops, I forgot my sum again. This is a sum. Don't forget your sum as I just started to. Okay, this is minus five to the k over k five to the k. Now, this divided by this, it's not minus one. That is the biggest mistake I've seen on people's work before. It's not minus one, right? Where can I make a side work box? I'll write it here, then I will erase it. If we had minus five to the K over five to the K, okay? Well, this is the same thing as properties of exponents minus five over five all to the k. So this is a minus one to the k, okay? So don't just say this is the sum of negative one over k. That's not true. In fact, you will get the wrong conclusion if you do that. It's a 
minus one to the k times one over k, like this, okay? Now I will erase my, well maybe I'll write it, then I'll erase my little side work box. So this is a sum, k equals one to infinity minus one to the k over k. This is one reason that I always will write the two endpoints together before I make a conclusion, or I'll write the series for the two endpoints. Then I make my conclusion because you see, there's a relationship here. Well, if you take the absolute value of this series, you get this one. So sometimes you can use that um, to help you say some things. Not, not in this case, but maybe in the next example. Okay, now, these series we know a lot about, right? This is harmonic series diverges. And this one is the alternating harmonic series and it converges. This was, this is one reason why the alternating or the harmonic series in general is very important series because for instance, the terms go to zero, but the series itself diverges. The alternating series converges. Okay, alternating harmonic series, I should say. Okay, well, we have figured out the endpoints, which means um, at minus three, we are converging. At seven, we are diverging. Okay, and now I need to write down, well, I can just write the actual interval. It is going to be close minus three to open seven. This is the interval of convergence. And now I will, like this, we have ruled out the other ones. Converges at minus three, diverges at seven. This is the interval here, okay? These problems are, maybe you might think about them as being long because you have to, there are two whole steps. Number one, radius of convergence. This is a ratio test. Then you have to test the endpoints. Okay, here's our next example. Okay, here's the coefficients. Then we have x plus one to the k. My center minus one, right? The center minus one. Okay, now we're going to proceed just as we began in the last one to find the radius, interval of convergence, ratio test. So we look at absolute value a k plus one over a k, which is absolute value x plus one to the k plus one over, oh, then we have a three to the k plus one up here. And then in the denominator, I have a k plus one squared. Okay, I'm just moving this in the numerator here like this. And then when I, I yeah, okay, I'll go ahead and write it down here. I was gonna go ahead and invert multiply, it's fine. I'll start off ak plus one over ak and absolute value, then I will line things up just like the last example. So here we have an absolute value of x to the k, we have a three to the k, and then in the denominator we have k squared. Okay, so then we have, uh-oh, I meant to have x plus one to the k. Okay, very nice, now it is correct. <laughs> I had left off the plus one. Here we go, x plus one to the k plus one over x plus one to the k, and then in my numerator I have a three to the k plus one. My denominator I have a three to the k, and then finally in my numerator I have a k squared, in my denominator, I have a k plus one squared, okay? Well, here we go. This is very similar to the last one where um, in my numerator, I have an absolute value x plus one. And then, well here, this is in the numerator with a three. So I have times three times, and then I have k squared over k plus one squared. Okay, now I take a limit. Okay, so I have simplified absolute value a k plus one over a k. I take a limit as k goes to infinity. 
absolute value, ak plus one over ak. This is a limit as k goes to infinity of x plus one in absolute value times three times k squared over k plus one squared. Well, again, there's no k and there's no k. The only thing with a k, the only thing varying as k goes to infinity is this part. Okay, which, what is this limit? If you don't see it, we will make a side box and do it right now. Here, maybe. If we want a limit as k goes to infinity of k squared over k plus one squared, you could multiply this out in the denominator, but you don't have to. You can write this as a single squared. This is k over k plus one squared. And then use the fact that f of x is x squared is a continuous function, which means you can bring the limit inside and the limit as k goes to infinity of k over k plus one is one. So this limit is one squared, which is one. Okay. We showed this limit is one, which means this limit here is absolute value x plus one times three. Okay. Now ratio test. We set this less than one for convergence, less than one using the ratio test. And this is for convergence. Okay. Now, just like the last one, how would we get an absolute value x minus the center less than some capital R when we see this? Well, in this case, just divide by three. So we see absolute value x plus one less than one third, which means capital R is one third. Okay, so we found part A, which is the radius of convergence. Now let me erase my side work up here and I will write that and we will draw the little number line. And I recommend you do that because it's very easy to get the wrong endpoints just because you move too quick. Okay, so my number line is here. We have capital R is one third. My center, negative one. Now I wanna move one third in each direction from my center. In this direction, it will be negative four over three. And in this direction, it's negative two over three. And so these are my two endpoints. Okay, so, so far, I will draw this again like we know from the last example. I don't know anything. I don't know anything at those two values, but I do know the power series converges all in here. And similarly, the power series will diverge out here and out here. Okay, what's left to do is, oh, pardon me, is test the endpoints. And just like I did in the last example, I will write out the power series for both the endpoints, and then I'll kind of look at them together uh, before I write down my conclusion. So one endpoint is x is negative four over three. My power series is k equals one to infinity. We have three to the k over k squared. And then we have minus four thirds plus one to the k. Okay, well this is, if you add these two, you get negative one third. So this is, we have a three to the k over k squared, negative one third to the k. And then if you multiply these two, three to the k times minus a third to the k, this is that minus one to the k, like we saw in the last example. 
This is a minus one to the k over k squared, okay? Now let's do the other endpoint. I'll leave a little space so we can write something about the convergence or divergence. So we take a sum, one to infinity, we have three to the k, k squared, we have minus two thirds, okay? Then this is, this is one third in here. So we have three to the K over K squared times one third to the K. When you multiply three to the K, one third to the K here, it's just one to the K, which is, which is one. So this is a sum infinity of one over K squared. Now you see in the last one is very similar. We have this sum, which is, well, term by term, it's absolute value of what we see in this one. This is one where I can use my knowledge of how series can converge to sort of do them at the same time. So let's justify the non-negative series first. Okay, well this converges as it is a P-series. where p equals two bigger than one, okay? Now this one, if the absolute value, if you take term by term, the absolute value, and you look at that series, if that converges, that's called absolute convergence, right? And we know if a series converges absolutely, then the series converges, okay? So here, we, this argument I've already looked at, is why this converges because so C below as seen below this series converges absolutely okay if you converge absolutely then you converge this is a stronger type of convergence okay so what we see here is that this converges at both endpoints. And so my interval of convergence is closed negative four thirds to negative two thirds and closed on, on each end like this, okay? Here's another example. Now the first thing you might see when you look here is, wait a second, is that even a power series? Because I do not see exactly x minus the center to the k. Or if it is a power series, certainly we see a variable x here in powers, what is the center? Okay, well, let's make this observation. So note, we can work with this and simplify. Okay, here, if we pull a two out, this would be x plus one half here. And then, so, so far I have just factored a two out, left it inside the parentheses to the K. And then if I pull this outside, I see it's a two to the K, X plus one half to the K. So in fact, this is a power series. In fact, maybe I'll rewrite it that way. So this is equal to k equals zero to infinity, this is k factorial, this is two to the k, x plus one half to the k. And now you see it the way we're used to seeing it, we see x minus the center to the k, the center is negative one half, and then this part is the coefficients. Okay, this is just a comment, this is without a doubt a power series, we just did a little bit of algebra to see um, in the form we're used to looking at a power series. Okay, well, now let us begin. We begin as we had in the few that we have done so far, which is the ratio test. AK plus one over AK in absolute value. Again, these two parts are terms. These are always non-negative, so I will leave them. And then we have an X plus, oh, here's where my absolute values come. This is what I was just saying. Absolute value X plus one half to the K plus one. 
And then this is all of a k plus one divided by, we have a k factorial, we have a two to the k, and then we have absolute value x plus one half to the k. Now, here I don't need to invert and multiply. In fact, I already have everything lined up. I can just start um, simplifying this. k plus one factorial over k factorial is going to be just k plus one. 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the k is just 2. And then this term divided by this term is absolute value x plus 1 half. Okay, like this. Now, here we go. We have simplified absolute value a k plus 1 over a k. Let's take a limit. As k goes to infinity, absolute value a k plus 1 over a k. This is a limit as k goes to infinity of k plus one times two times absolute value x plus one half. Now, don't be too quick to calculate this limit because we really have more than one thing that can happen. Certainly, just like in the last few examples, this part is not varying with k, right? Here, maybe I won't underline it, I will box. What is varying with k? This is the only part varying with k. And this term, without a doubt, is going to infinity, okay? So, that's not the only answer though, because here, this is going to infinity, provided this part is not zero. So this is if x is not equal to negative one half. Because if you're negative a half, this is zero. And then k plus one times zero is zero for all k, okay? And that's the other thing, is that this is zero if x is negative one half, okay? Because, as I was just saying, if x is negative a half, this whole thing is zero for every single k. Then you take a limit of zero, zero. Okay, so we have two possibilities for this limit. And you notice, if we think ratio test, this one bigger than one diverges. This one less than one. So what you see here is the only time this limit is less than one um, is when you're at the center. So we see the interval of convergence is just the center, and the radius of convergence is zero. And there's nothing more to test here. There's no endpoints to test. This was, I think, the second option we had, and there are three possibilities of how our power series converges, and this is um, an example of when it only converges at the center. This is my last example, and then I will point you towards my example video where you can watch a few more if you want, or you can get started on, on problems homework yourself. Okay, so we have one more power series. We need to find the radius and interval of convergence. Ratio test. We look at the absolute value, ak plus one over ak. Okay, well, what do we see here? This one is a little different because this minus eight part, depending on k, can be negative. So what happens when we take the absolute value? Well, this part, non-negative. Here, I put the absolute value around this because x minus six may be positive or negative, but here, when you take the absolute value of minus eight to the k, well, this is just eight to the k. Well, except I'm doing k plus one. <laughs> but if I take the absolute value of this, the minus sign just goes away because I'm looking at absolute value. Okay, so it's like this. And then we divide by the square root of k, absolute value x minus six to the k, and then we have eight to the k, like this. Okay, we invert, multiply, line things up. We have absolute value x minus six to the k plus one divided by absolute value x minus six to the k. Those are lined up. 
Then we have, um, in the denominator here, we have an eight to the k plus one. We have an eight to the k. And then we have, in the numerator, we have a square root k plus one. In the denominator, square root k. Let's make sure this is right. This is in the denominator. Invert, multiply. This is in the numerator, denominator. Okay, it looks good. Now, somehow I, going to be out of space. Maybe I can fit it in here kind of small. Maybe I'll back this up and have a little bit more space. So then we would have square root k plus one over square root k. Okay, now I have more space to write. I should have enough to fit it now. In my numerator, I have absolute value x minus six. My denominator, I have an eight. And then I have this, which just like when we had k plus one squared, or no, it was k squared over k plus one squared, but I can bring this all into one single square root. So it's a square root k plus one over k, like this. It's similar, as I mentioned, when we had squared, I think it was second or third example that we did. Okay. Now I have this simplified. I am ready to take a limit as k goes to infinity, limit as k goes to infinity of this, absolute value ak plus one over ak is here. This is a limit as k goes to infinity, absolute value x minus six over eight times the square root k plus one over k. What's happening? Again, this has no k in it. This part is varying with k, and what we can do, square root x is a continuous function. This means we can bring the limit inside the square root, so bring the limit inside the square root, and this will approach the square root of one, right? Which is one. So this is going to one. Okay, so my limit is absolute value x minus six over eight. By the ratio test, I need this less than one for convergence by the ratio test. Okay, and then we multiply through by eight. So another way to say this is or absolute value x minus six less than eight. We have found, right, this was the third part in what can possibly happen. We have absolute value x minus six less than, so capital R for convergence, this is R. Capital R equals eight. Okay, now my center is six, right? Let's draw a number line. We will test the endpoints. Here is my center. I move by eight in this direction, 14. I move by eight in the other direction, negative two, okay? And I know so far, I don't know what, what happens here. I don't know what happens here. All in here converges and, I lost my green, out here, diverges, diverges. Okay, what is left is to test at x equals 14 and at x equals negative two. Okay, and just like I've done in the examples, I will write out the power series for both and then I'll look at them kind of together and make my conclusion. Or conclusions, I should say. Plural, we have two conclusions to make. Okay, so at x equals negative two, what's my power series? k equals one to infinity. We have square root k. We have um, minus two minus six to the k over minus eight to the k, which is a sum k equals one to infinity, we have square root k. 
And then we're gonna have minus eight to the K over minus eight to the K. This is just a sum, K equals one to infinity, square root K, okay? <laughs> I said square root K, okay. So many Ks. Okay, here we go. At, let me give a little space for justification. My other endpoint, 14, we have a sum. K equals one to infinity, square root K. 14 minus six to the K over minus eight to the K. And this becomes We have a minus eight to the K over, no, positive eight to the K, pardon me, over minus eight to the K. When you divide these two, eight over minus eight is minus one, but then it's to the K, okay? This is a sum, K equals one to infinity of minus one to the K square root K. What's happening at these two endpoints? Well, you see, again, I look at them together when I think about making a conclusion, and it can help me. What's happening here? Well, term test. Right here, if we take a limit, as k goes to infinity of square root k, we get infinity not equal to zero by the term test. This series k equals one to infinity square root k diverges. Now similarly, and we discussed this back in our sequence discussion, we have something going to zero, okay? Then, I mean, excuse me, something going to infinity. Then we add this minus one to the k. So this is going to, to gets further away, further away and alternating, the limit does not exist. This one is also a term test, except the limit, k goes to infinity of minus one to the k square root k. This D and E, well, the reason oscillates, right? If you wanna give a reason why it does not exist. And again, by the term test, the sum k equals one to infinity minus one to the k, square root k, diverges. Okay, so in this example, we have diverges and diverges at both endpoints. And so to finish the story, I didn't write it, let's do it now. My capital R we found was, well, eight. And my interval is open. It goes minus two to 14, okay, like this. Now, now I will say, you can see my example video. I don't remember if I did one or two more examples, but it's over here, take a look. You can see more examples, or if you're ready to start working problems, you can do that too and come back to this.